All right, this is a pretty complicated example of a second order linear constant coefficient inhomogeneous ODE. The right hand side not only involves a product of two functions, but it also involves a sum. So we're going to have to work out what we do with that. Uh, the first task, of course, is to solve the associated homogeneous problem. Um, so let's get started. We're trying to solve this. H for homogeneous, of course, equals zero. We make the guess or the hypothesis that yh equals e to the lambda t. We plug in to obtain the characteristic equation. We find that lambda equals plus or minus two. So that's two real eigenvalues. So y homogeneous equals a e to the minus two t plus b e to the two t, which is cool, right? That's, that's nice. We can set that aside for now. We've got to deal with this fairly awful um, right-hand side term. We know what to do if we've got a product, um, but let's just think about what linear means. Linear means that things add up how we want them to. If we have a solution to the ODE, we can add another solution to that to recover a third solution. So we can superpose our solutions. So what we're actually gonna to have to do here is we're gonna to have to make the guess that y equals y homogeneous plus y particular one plus y particular two. This uh, y particular one deals with the e to the t, or the exponential one. And y particular two deals with the cosine. Once we, so we're gonna get two separate problems now when we substitute in. Um, however, we don't have to do the substitution in two parts. We can just do it in one big go. We just have to figure out, uh, so this will be like G1 of T, this will be G2 T. Right, so we just have to write down our guess. This is also a product right? We've got t times e to the t. So our guess in this case is going to have to be the most general linear function times by the most general exponential function that we can think of. So let's start putting this together. yp1 equals c0 plus c1t. You can put in a c there if you like e to the t, but that's just going to rewrite, right? We can just factor that into these. We can call these d noughts just to make sure that they're different, right? We can always do that. So the linear part comes from matching this linear polynomial here. The exponential part comes from matching the exponential. Now we've got to match cos 2t. So when we match cos 2t, we've got a different constant. Um, let's call it a naught cos 2t. And then we've got a sine. So we've got the sine bit like so associated with a1. When we put all this together, our guess is y equals y homogeneous uh, plus uh, 
okay? Now that we've got all this junk, <laughs> we our equation as we normally would. It's just quite long. So remember what happens to the homogeneous part. That always disappears. So I don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to have to substitute all of this into my LDE. So Um, all right, so I'm going to need y particular double prime, so I'm going to need to differentiate all of this, which means using the product rule. So differentiate this bit, leave the second bit alone. yp prime equals d1 e to the t plus leave this bit alone differentiate the second bit which is the same thing right it's it's just the same as the original function because we've got an exponential so that's nice now we've got to deal with the sinusoidal bits um, so we're going to get a minus 2 a naught sine plus 2 a 1 cos right Second derivative time. This just stays the same because it's an exponential. This, again, we apply the product rule, but really I'm just copying down this whole thing here because we already just differentiated this bit. If you don't believe me, use the product rule as normal. Okay, I'm going to write this on two separate lines. I've got to differentiate this bit now. All right. Once I've got that, I can plug it all into my ODE up there and sort the bits out. So. I have to write this bit down here. And I've got a lot of simplifying to do. and go one step further. I could like go one step further on that as well if I wanted. Um, 
but I'm actually going to do something slightly different. I'm going to separate the e to the t's and the e to the and the t e to the t. Okay, this is as far as we need to go with this. It's now a case of equating like terms. On the right hand side, we do not have a sine term. So we can immediately see that A1 must be zero so that the sine term on the left hand side disappears. We only have one cosine term. Um, so in fact, we can see that a naught must be minus one eighth. This isn't actually too bad to dissect this one actually from here. We see that D one must be equal to minus a third, such that we get T E to the T on both sides. That's about as far as we can go with the obvious ones. The last one then is this one here. We have two D one minus three D naught. Right. There's no E to the T on this side. So this has got to be zero. But because we know what D one is, we can solve this fairly comfortably for D naught. All right, let me just compare against my solution. Okay, so my cosine term should have a one eight. Let's just zoom out. My cosine term in my pre plotted solution has a one eight against it. Yup. My <laughs> Sine term has a zero against it. Yep. Uh, my, my, my purely exponential term should have picked up this minus two ninths, which it does. And uh, yep, alrighty, sweet. This is indeed correct by comparing to uh, my, my pre-worked answer. So y equals the homogeneous part, which was a e to the, uh, t where did I do my homogeneous part? Minus two t plus b e to the two t. All right, um, minus two over nine, minus t over three, I'm going to take the minus sign outside some brackets. And then my last one is this is this cosine term that's got the minus one eighth. That's the general solution in this case. I don't have any initial conditions, so I can't sub in for them. I can't find my capital A and B, so I stop there.